I've been thinking a lot about what it means to heal. As a medical student, I'm privileged to witness moments of healing every day from a young person who's finally found an antidepressant that works for them, to parents who hold their infants for the first time, to a man whose wife has passed away and is now taking the steps he needs to address his pain. This is the art of medicine. This is applying the scientific principles we learn in the classroom to unique individual human beings. And now in medicine, there's been a cultural shift so that we appreciate that patients are experts of their own bodies and physicians aren't simply the gatekeepers of knowledge. And speaking of knowledge, I think we have a pretty intuitive understanding of what it means to educate the mind, but we don't always think about what it means to educate the heart. What does it look like to teach compassion? What does it look like to teach empathy? And how do we learn these characteristics that are so important? So, this is your heart, um, and it's a pump that pumps oxygen and nutrients through blood all throughout your body. Um, and we use it as a metaphor for emotion, which makes a lot of sense, but we also sometimes underappreciate how strong it is. It's made almost entirely of muscle, and it adapts to all your body's demands. And this is your brain. It's a collection of neurons um, that sends electrical signals throughout the rest of your body. And in this way, it acts as a command center. So it makes sense that we use the mind as a metaphor for reason. But the irony of all this is that within your brain, the regions that are traditionally associated with logic and emotion are physically interconnected. And so now we understand that it really is impossible to separate those two functions of thinking and feeling. This is a false dichotomy. And through that dichotomy, we lose some nuance. What we also dichotomize are roles that individuals fulfill. For example, we sometimes forget that doctors can be patients too. And something I've been thinking about is what happens when these roles collide? It can be painfully uncomfortable, but it can also teach us a bit about what it means to be human. So let's use a case as an example. A 26-year-old medical resident who's fresh out of med school has noticed some changes in her body and she's finding that she's in excruciating pain every day. So she goes to her doctor. This doctor, as all humans inevitably do, makes a mistake. She doesn't really take the, the patient's pain seriously because while she's a little teary, she's still smiling, she's still pretty calm. Um, so it can't really be an eight out of 10. Fortunately, the patient is properly diagnosed a week later, but she's in the emergency room and she's already spent a week wondering if maybe she's making up the pain in her head or if she's exaggerating how severe it is. This kind of an experience, to have your lived experience overlooked as a, as a source of information or a source of insight is terribly isolating. The doctor didn't make a mistake because she lacked medical knowledge. She made a mistake because she assumed that distancing herself from the patient's objective experience would make her more objective. So I think the way that we can work around this challenge is to reframe the way we view emotions and to think of them as a source of information or a kind of evidence. We often think of evidence as a Sherlock Holmes kind of logical sort of thing, but I think feelings also tell us how we feel about the world around us. And in fact, I would argue that we make more rational decisions when we fully take into account all the factors that influence how we make decisions including emotions. Now I do think that there's a group of people that naturally do this, and those people are kids. Um, and so naturally, <laughs> as we grow up, with good reason, um, we learn to temper our emotions a bit more. But I think kids are really the masters of understanding how they feel in an environment really gives insight into who they are as people. And so I don't think that growing up means that we should be less emotional, and I don't think that being more reasonable means we have to be less emotional. And in fact, I think that emotions are really most crucial when we are shaping our relationships with others. How we feel around people really um, sets the tone for how our relationships progress. Whether we feel like we could spend every day with someone versus if we feel we notice red flags. And now, I must admit, there's a major caveat to what I'm saying. Emotions can be dangerous sometimes, especially when fear and anger fuel biases. 
So I don't mean to suggest that emotions are more important than logic, but that a balance is in order and we sometimes have it tipped too far in one direction. So I would say our hearts and our heads influence each other and each plays an important role and has its time. Um, and we make a mistake when we think that we should be objective without acknowledging the subjective experiences we all share. So next time you find yourself in a meeting and someone starts to withdraw or you feel like someone starts to get a little upset, instead of saying things like, oh, she isn't being very objective about this or he's too emotionally invested, consider how we can use the emotions of a situation to learn lessons about who we are and how we can work together as teams. I also think it's important that we stop assuming that any expression of um, emotion means that we've lost any sort of reason or that we're less reasonable the more we express emotion. I've seen situations where someone is calm, cool, and confident, but totally wrong. And <laughs> I know we've all experienced this. And we've also, I've also seen situations where someone is crying heaps of tears, but is also totally correct, but is being discounted because of their expression of emotion. So I would like to end on the same note I began with healing. I once heard a surgeon explain to his patient that her incision would heal from the inside out. And I like to think of our growth as human beings and in our relationships with others the same way, um, especially when we realize that our hearts are our heads. So thank you.